Hi guys! In today's video, we will unbox, test and review the new Totem TTS laser engraver from Two Trees. You want to know all the details? Then stay tuned! Hi guys, welcome back! My name is Rui, and this is the Rui Raptor YouTube channel. If you want to help us out, you can by giving this video a like and subscribe to the channel. You can also help by joining our Patreon page or by clicking on any of the affiliate links posted below in the video description. Here we have the Totem TTS laser engraver from Two Trees. This is the most recent model from this manufacturer. First, Let's check what's inside the box. Inside the first box, we can see that everything is packed inside smaller boxes. In the biggest one, and right at the top, we have some samples and the instruction sheet. Then we have the controller, a wooden sample, a USB cable, protection goggles, the X-axis carriage, a bag with tools, a bag with screws, next is the X-axis belt tensioner, a couple of plastic feet, a couple more plastic feet, then we have one of the Y-axis profiles and carriage, then the second Y-axis profile and carriage, one of the X-frame profile, then the second X-frame profile, and finally the X-axis profile. In the smaller box, we have the laser module, the power supply, the focus tool, and the focus tool mount. This one is 3D printed. And these are all the parts that came inside the box. The power supply is this small unit. It can output 12 volts and 3 amps. And this is the laser module. It includes a shield at the bottom that is secured by magnets. This laser is a fixed focus model and with the max power of 5.5 watts. At the top is the small electronic board and the cooling fan. One of the nice features of this laser engraver is the fact that it includes this small Z-axis to easily adjust the laser height. And this is the controller. At the left is where all the cables go. From the back side we can see the board. The board is equipped with the 32-bit microcontroller and Wi-Fi module. At the top is the power connector, the USB connector, the on and off switch and the memory card slot. This engraver also includes a small cylinder with several steps. This is used to place the laser module at the correct focus distance. And then is this 3D printed piece to secure the focus tool on the engraver. For the X-axis, it's possible to adjust the belt's tension with this tensioner. The X-axis frame profiles are different from each other. The one with all the holes is the one that needs to be installed at the front. All four frame profiles have a millimetric scale on them. And this one is the X-axis profile. This profile has a cable glued to it. The Y-axis profiles are the ones that come with the carriage already on them. This one is the left one. One thing we need to do is to adjust the wheel's grip. To do this, we need to use a wrench and turn the eccentric nuts. You should do this for all the carriages. We made a video some time ago explaining in detail how eccentric nuts work and how to correctly adjust them, so we recommend you guys to check it out. You can check the video description for the link. Ok, now for the assembly. Start by placing all the profiles on their correct position on the table. Next, take the front profile and place it against the left profile like this. Grab some M5 by 20 screws and use them to secure the profiles. Do the same for the right side. 
and for the back profile as well. Make sure they are secured and squared. Next, grab some M5 by 10 screws and the plastic feet and install them like this on the front and back profiles. The screws go on the outer holes. With the four feet installed and while sitting on a flat surface, check if the frame is perfectly squared. Next, get some M5 by 20 screws and use them on the inner holes of the four feet. The next step is to disassemble the belt tensioner so that we can pass the belt. And to do that, unscrew the adjustment screw first, push the idler out, and then remove the idler from the mount by removing the screw. Ok, now we need to install the X-axis profile. Make sure you get the side with the several holes on the left and the side with just the three holes on the right side. Get the cable out of the way and then take the X-axis carriage and slide it on the profile like this. Take the opportunity now to check and adjust the wheels grip on this carriage as well. Ok, we have the X-axis almost ready to install. Now align the belt correctly along the profile. And then take the idler, pass the belt around it and install it back on the belt tensioner. To secure the tensioner on the profile, use a couple of M4 by 20 screws. Next, align both left and right carriages and place the X axis on them. To secure the X axis profile on the Y axis carriages, you need the M4 by 45 screws. You need to place them from underneath, two on each side. Now we need to pass the belt around the X-axis stepper motor. But before that, we need to loosen the belt's tension on the tensioner. And then we pass the belt around the motor's pulley. Once that is done, we can tighten the belt's tension. It's also possible to adjust the tension on the two Y-axis belts, but to do that, you need to loosen the screws that secure the belt and adjust. Next is the laser module. We need to secure it on the X-axis carriage using the M3 by 8 screws two on each side. Make sure the laser module is squared with the structure while installing it. The shield can be placed now under the laser module. Next we use some more M4 by 20 screws to install on the front profile, a cable restrainer, the focus tool mount, and the controller. We also need to install a cable restrainer on the left side of the X-axis profile. Ok, now we take the long cable and secure it on the front restrainer using a couple of zip ties. On the X-axis cable restrainer, we secure both cables again with a couple of zip ties. First the thicker one,
and then the thinner one. The other end of the thinner cable is secured on the X-axis carriage. And now we can connect everything. First, the laser module, and then the right Y-axis stepper motor. At the left side there are several connectors, but all of them have labels on them. So, the one labeled Y2 connects to the cable that is attached to the X-axis profile. The one labeled X connects to the X-axis stepper motor. The X-axis stepper motor is the one at the top. And then the one labeled Y1 connects to the left Y-axis stepper motor. To secure the cables, you can use these small plastic pieces and use them like this. OK, and the assembly is now complete. This engraver has a workable area of 300 by 300 millimeters. All we need to do now is connect the power and the USB cable from the engraver to the PC and turn the engraver on. It's possible to run the engraver with the PC connected to it using the USB cable or through Wi-Fi. It's also possible to control the engraver using a cell phone through Wi-Fi. This engraver does not have any end stops, so if you are using Lightburn software to control the engraver, you need to disable the run home sequence. The start from also needs to be defined as current position. This way, you move manually the laser to the position you want the job to start from. To adjust the laser focus distance is very easy. Just place the material you want to engrave or cut under the laser and then use the focus tool. The focus tool has several steps. For engraving, you need to use the top step and for cutting, you need to use the other steps. Place the focus tool on the material and adjust the height of the laser until the heatsink sits on the focus tool. That's it! The laser should now be at the correct focus distance. For our tests, we start doing some engravings on wood. While working with any laser, make sure you always use safety goggles to protect your eyes. And in this case, Use them regardless if you have the shield installed on the laser or not. We also made some cuts on wood. In this example, the cut was done on a 3mm thick MDF board. Next, we ran some engravings on cork. And finally, some engravings on stone. And these are the results. The engraving worked as we were expecting. No issues whatsoever. And it was able to burn them at a decent speed. Cutting through thin wood was also not difficult. But it was required to make a few passes so that the laser would go through. Engraving on cork was very easy. But you also need to set the speed and laser power correctly for a dark but clean burn. And finally the stone. Engraving on stone was probably the easiest since this material is more forgiving. The result was very good. This new model from Two Trees looks to be a good and affordable solution for those that want to start engraving and cutting with a laser. The 5.5 watt laser module produces good quality engravings with a very decent speed. And it can cut some materials such as this 3mm MDF wood with just a few passes. The assembly is very straightforward and easy to do. The structure is made from aluminum profiles 
and a few plastic parts such as the blue carriages and the feet. The workable area is 300 by 300 millimeters, which is great, and if you get the extension kit, you can increase the workable area even more. The engraver is equipped with a couple of Y-axis stepper motors and a small Z-axis with a thumb screw to easily move the laser up or down to adjust the focus. For the focus adjustment, the manufacturer included a small cylinder with stabs to easily adjust the laser height. The engraver is also equipped with a 32-bit board and Wi-Fi module. This means you can use the engraver connected to a PC or remotely using a cell phone or computer through Wi-Fi. Last but not least, the on and off button is very convenient, and it can be used as an emergency switch to stop the laser. And that's it you guys, thanks for watching. We will see you guys next time. Bye!